What's going on, boys and girls? My name is Michael SK, and welcome back to the Free Grusaya. Last time we finished up our little beach trip, we returned back to the school, and we exchanged cell phone numbers as well as our email addresses, because that seems to be a common thing in the anime Japan shit, or whatever. I don't know, but anyways, we're going to be going into Papa was a Rolling Stone, so... Hope you guys enjoy this. Make sure you leave a like if you enjoy these and all that great stuff. You don't have to. It just makes me happy to see a bunch of likes on a video. But let's get right into it. I'd like to load that save right up. The 13th day of the 7th month. July 13th. What is today, actually? It's actually almost the end of July. My birthday is coming up, too. Pretty sure this will be uploaded before my birthday. And I will not state what my birthday is because I probably will be doing that anyways later on. Having finished up an after-school trip to the supermarket by the station, where I picked up three days worth of food, I'm briskly making my way back to the dorm. The contents of the plastic supermarket bag dangling from my hand, six cans of vegetables and beans, a head of lettuce, a box of corn cereal, a carton of milk, and a bottle of oolong tea. If Omni happened to see this assortment of groceries, she'd probably get on my case about my tragically bland diet. Not that I can really argue with that description. The thing is though, my appetite is borderline defective. I almost never get the urge to eat anything in particular. Since I don't have much in the way of preferences, my simplistic few choices are only natural. It's not really something I can change about myself. There were stretches of my life where my diet consisted entirely of hard old bread, so crusty I had to soak it in water before I could sink my teeth into it. Compared to that, anything seems delicious. Damn dude. My private cell phone begins to buzz in, my, in the pocket of my uniform, emitting the familiar electronic jingle. It's just, an, it's just as unpleasant now as it was the first time I heard it. More spam was my first thought, but after my classmates seized my email address a few days ago, I've, getting, I've been getting messages from them relatively frequently. I don't know why I started messing up there. My bad. The most frequent sender would be Amine. Her messages are most often, Where are you at the moment? type inquiries about my situation followed by what do you want to eat tonight style survey questions about my or about the dinner menu which tend to leave me racking my brains for an answer and finally limited time sale 4 p.m today buy a pack of large eggs from show whatever that is and other requests to run errands for her mix in with ominous frequent messages i've also gotten mail from sachi such as i have discovered a beehive hanging under the roof of the pe pe warehouse I'm sending this message in the hope you might be able to assist in the extermination. That one's a pretty typical example. They tend to be polite in invitations to join in unified peacekeeping operations around the school. Well, since those messages, oh, God damn, messages at least approach meaningful communication, they're comparatively not too bad. After all, there was that one email from Michiru that arrived in the middle of the night. After opening that particular message, I stared at the screen blankly for a good three seconds before finally cocking my head to the side in a rare gesture of complete confusion. The mail's contents... Uh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, die, 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 hate, 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 hate. It's simply... or a simple lightning of angry words. And although I tried to remember whether I'd done anything to offend Michiru lately, no satisfactory explanation presented itself. Which isn't to say nothing came to mind, of course. If anything, so many things occurred to me that it was hard to pin down any one particular incident that might have inspired her wrath. But when I met Michiru the next morning and brought it up, apparently while in bed that night, some stupid little mistake she'd made a long time ago popped into her head. Unable to sleep from irritation, she'd taken it out on me via email. And the mistaken in question, or the mistaken question, back in elementary school science class, the teacher had asked everyone to name any fish they could think of. So Michiru raised her hand energetically and shouted out, Sushi, earning the, ridic the ridicule of her classmates. In other words, pretty much the most idiotic thing in the world to be losing sleep over years after the fact. Imagine if you can, the exasperation and exhaustion I felt. Anyway, among all these messages, the only one to make me laugh was sent by Sakaki. I had assumed I wouldn't get a single email from her in the first place, so it was a bit of a surprise just to receive that message. But the real issue was its contents. To be specific, the message contained all of four letters, TEST. Of course, one could interpret this as the, as the condensed form of a more expressive message. I 
は原告のテストだね。ユージはちゃんと勉強してる、uh, I'm not sure about that. 私はダメだ。なんか急に気になって部屋の掃除始めちゃったよ。そしたら中学時代の卒業アルバムが出てきたよ。中学生の私、超可愛いよ。まさに鬼ラブリー。今度見せてあげるね。バイユミコ。ああ、いや、シュー。Sure, that's how it went down. But somehow I think not. Probably no, pretty much definitely. She sent it solely for the purpose of confirming that the mail would be delivered properly. A sort of metho methodical, whatever, caution for its own sake seemed very much like Sakaki. I sent a concise received in reply to her message and haven't received another from her since. Well then, who is it from this time? I opened the email folder on my phone with a feeling of mild embarrassment, but the title of the message is an instant letdown. Will you be my papa? Oh, this is early. I never knew some girl would call me daddy. From the title alone, it's pretty, it's pretty clearly spam. I have no idea where they get my email address, since I've never given it out to anyone but my classmates, but this sort of garbage arrives at a pretty decent clip. I work for a company in the business of information, and we've got a pretty nice database. But sometimes I think a bunch of people trying to sell me phony Viagra just might have the superior intelligence network. While reflecting on the spammer's frightening abilities, I press the delete button, but at that moment my eyes jump to the name of the sender, and I pause in utter confusion. From Irisu Makina. Makina? I cancel the deletion command, open the bizarrely titled email, and quickly look over the contents. Hello, this is Makina. Oni-chan, allow me to express my sincere- Oh, that's not how you spell sincere. Congratulations on your continuing good health. In conclusion, this con constitutes a formal announcement that you have officially leveled up from Oni-chan to Papa. Thank you very much for my consideration, yours truly. It's complete gibberish. The writing is all over the place. There are all sorts of strange typos, and not a single word is capitalized. Also, I have no idea what any of it is supposed to mean. Level up? Papa? What is this girl thinking about? Or talking about? Well, I wasn't expecting any message from her to be particularly well composed, but this is just too co incoherent. Judging from this, I think it would be quite. It would take quite some time to unravel the mystery if we communicate through email. I type out a quick reply. I don't understand. Let's talk face to face, okay? Send. Awkwardly tapping out a few words, I send back my response. Makina's reply arrives in less than a minute. Whatever that says. Why German? Does she want me to meet in Valhalla or something? Anyway, it's pretty obvious that finding the girl and talking face to face is the only way this will get cleared up. Of course, even then, we're dealing with Machina here. Smooth and mutual understanding may be too much to hope for. But at the very least, communication in person has none of the lag time of a text message. And unlike a phone call, you can give the other party a good smack when, when necessary. Ugh. I hurry back to the dorm. And my conference with Machina. The same day, but at 420, that said 420 right there. It may have said 1620, but we all know what that means. 15 minutes later, I pass through the school gate on my way back to the dorm, and I'm cutting through the courtyard. I observe a bizarre object a little ways off. The rounded, soft-looking object in question lies a slack on the, on the brick-paved ground. To be more specific... Okay. To be more specific, it appears to be the corpse of a little girl. Or if you prefer more idolatic, I, whatever that says, phrasing, a young woman seems to have fainted. This can't be happening. Let the plastic bag fall from my hand on the spot and rush to the girl's side. With every stride, her outline grows clear until the, the last, until at last the figure of the collapsed individual comes into sharp definition. Unruly curly hair that sticks out in every direction, a face as round as a dumpling, and the trademark touch as of stupidity, knee-high socks of two different colors. In particular, it's Irisu Makina. Hey, Makina, what's wrong? What? Makina stretched out limply on the ground like a marionette cut from its strings. When I lift her up by, my, by thus shoulders, her mouth flops open to reveal a white stick. What is this? The thin white stick emerging from her mouth is clearly man-made. It seems to be protruding from the depths of her throat. At a glance, it looks like the stick from a lollipop, but that can't be right, can it? 
Wavering between belief and doubt, I thrust my fingers inside Machina's mouth and pinch the white stick in question. I give it a hard yank, but whatever it is, it's lodged in there pretty firmly. God damn it. Working against my brute force attempt, the stick is not only short and difficult to grasp, but also slippery with Machina's saliva. It looks like it should pop right out, but it doesn't bulge. I'm reminded of the legendary sword in the stone. Little punk, is this a trial? Pull me out if you can and you'll be recognized as the hero of the legend, or of legend. I again grab the white stick with my fingers, then give Machina's back okay, a harsh thump, as if encouraging a baby to spit out something inedible. <laughs> as Machina lets out a violent cough like a consumptive heroine from a Victorian era novel, I pull the lollipop, mandarin orange flavor, free from her throat with a wet pop. <laughs> God damn, I actually haven't had a lollipop in a while, now that I think about it. Okay, how the hell did this happen? Hmm, that's a little weird. Don't fall asleep with a stick hanging out of your mouth. It's obviously dangerous. I mean, how old are you again? Damn, this game won't tell. I mean, if I hadn't happened to pass by here, might she have ended up suffocating to death? As if deliberately demonstrating her complete indifference to my concerns, Mikina casually offers me the same lollipop that I pulled out of her throat mere moments ago. No! Cut it out. You do realize you almost suffocated on that lump of sugar right now, right? Don't eat lollipops when you're moving around. They can kill you if you fall. It actually reminds me of a story. I'll tell it really quick. Give me 30 seconds, maybe. I don't know. I remember in class, I was having like some lifesavers, and those are the ones that you just put in your mouth and you just like suck on until like, you know, whatever. They weren't the gummy ones, I think. If they were gummy ones. But I remember I was walking around with them, and I accidentally tripped just a tiny bit, and one got lodged in my throat. And look, I was in third grade. I was little. Those things were pretty big. And I started choking. Everyone was looking at me. It was weird. The teacher was trying to get me water. That was a scary moment, and my throat hurt for the rest of the day. So, yes, don't move around when you're doing shit like that. Huh? Don't just sit on the ground. Eat the damn thing later. Now that's an insult. Don't put half-eaten candy in your damn skirt pocket. You're gonna turn it into a sticky mess. <laughs> What's so funny, punk? My, I might be noticing this a little late in the game, but is this girl mocking me? Calm yourself, Yuji. This is the way she is, right? Don't let her get to you. I press a hand on my... Er, to my forehead, I'm starting to mess up here, heave a long, heavy sigh, and firmly rub my temples. And, you planning to explain what that email was about? Huh? God damn it. Don't play dumb. I'm talking about this. Take my cell phone from my pocket, slide open the screen, and hold it out so Makina can see. It's displaying the incoherent message she sent me just a few minutes ago. And I'm telling you, I don't understand what it means. That's why I'm talking to you about it. You really shouldn't talk. Anyway, just tell me what you're trying to say here as thoroughly, concisely, and bluntly as possible. You know, I've never been asked this in my entire life. I've never been asked to be, you know, to be someone's daddy or actual father. And I don't think I ever want to be asked, because I don't know how to respond. Papa? Yeah, that was definitely the title of the email as well, but... No, wait. What does she even mean by that? Tell me something, Makina. When you say Papa, do you mean a Papa? Papa or... What the heck? Are you seriously asking me to become your father? Or are you talking about more of a sugar daddy type deal? You're looking for money to play around with, and you think I'm going to give it to you? Oh, 
そうじゃないのよお金はいらないのよさむしろ私のパパになってくれるならお金あげるのよ She'll give me money if I choose to be her father. The hell? I'll give you money, so please be my papa? What the hell is that? Every step I take in this bizarre conversation seems to be taking me farther and farther away from understanding the situation. Okay, hold on. Think this over calmly, Yuji. There is still a possibility I'm making some ridiculous mistake here. Before blaming others, carefully consider the possibility that you're the one who screwed up. I had that one beaten into me enough, right? Can't go for forgetting it now. 